welcome you to another edition of our weekly press briefing here at the Executive Mansion. Those of you who are joining us uh, via other platforms, um, via other, uh, whether it's radio, local television, um, and other online platform, we'd like to say you are welcome to this press briefing. Today is Friday, August 9. Uh, again, as you know, the intent of this press briefing is to inform the public on the happenings of His Excellency. His Excellency have had a very busy week. Um, there are a number of different things that have been happening at the Executive Mansion and the President's own participation in those events. This week, the President had a very interesting time. Um, for the first time, he attended the Liberia Investment Conference that took place at the ministerial complex where he spoke to the need for investment, especially private sector investment, as well as investment through the small, the, the small and medium enterprise community. And he was very excited, especially inviting and welcoming delegates from all across the world. You had delegates coming from the United States, uh, business leaders, and other individuals who had come to participate in this Liberia Investment Conference. As you know, the president is keen on ensuring the viability of the Liberian economy. So whatever opportunities that can be leveraged in these different activities, he takes it very seriously. Um, also, there was a meeting held during the course of the week with the with members of the Commercial Bank Association. Uh, he had a meeting with the Commercial Bank in understanding the challenges within the banking sector and how they, as well as the, His Excellency's office, can work on understanding those challenges, but more so strengthening their own participation within um, the Liberian economy. Yes, there have been different challenges within the banking sector, and that meeting talked about finding solutions and ways in which the relationship can be put together, leveraged for the opportunities in the sector, especially for the Liberian people. Um, the president also, during the course of the week, received um, the United States ambassador accredited near Monrovia, where he came to present his letter of credence to His Excellency, and he mentioned on the long-standing relationship with Liberia. Interestingly, um, he, uh, Ambassador Mark Turner, have been a Peace Corps volunteer in Liberia in time past many years ago, and being sent here to serve as ambassador was also uh, welcoming. And again, the president did mention some of the challenges um, within Liberia and also talked about the relationship between the United States and, and America, the, between the United States and Liberia and how that relationship can be strengthened and those challenges that Liberians have faced and uh, that the United States and Liberia can strengthen those uh, the relationship going forward. There was also the commissioning ceremony. Um, for the first time, as you know, Liberia did sign the code of conduct many years ago. And part of what was expected is the formation of the office of the ombudsman. It was recently His Excellency President Boakai established the office and appointed the head of the office as well as members, including Councillor um, Finley Kanga, Councillor Lami Pagoy, and Attorney Edmonia Martin, who are in charge of the office and to be able to get into the code of conduct. And uh, during the course of the week, His Excellency did the commissioning, um, LECO. And uh, as you know, the President again this morning did a groundbreaking ceremony for a 17,000 cubic meter gasoline storage facility as well as a testing lab at the Liberia Petroleum Refinery Company that uh, is in charge of ensuring that the availability of uh, gasoline product, um, fuel and petroleum product on the Liberian market. 
that program was well attended and the president is very excited on the workings of the team at the LPRC and he looks to hearing more of the programs that they're undertaking and uh, how those programs can contribute to the success of the Liberian economy. Um, he also did the launching. As you know, the educational sector has been challenging. And when the current minister, Madam Jasso, took office as the minister, uh, she did a tour across the country. And some of her findings was that the enrollment rate was very low, that kids were dropping out of school, especially um, in rural communities. And that the team at the Ministry of Education thought that it's important to begin a process of raising awareness in communities, but more so in showing that um, the classroom is conducive. The classrooms are conducive. The president did allude to the fact that there are challenges um, in the counties, in the classrooms, even based on the minister's report. There are classrooms that are leaking. There are places that no chairs and a lot of other things. Um, the president did speak at the occasion earlier today um, talking about the need for strengthening the educational system, especially making sure that the schools are okay for the kids, and that he charged the Minister of Education and her team to ensure that corruption is rooted out of the educational system. And he said very clear, in clear terms, that he's going to insist and ensure that, you know, our educational system represents what it should be for the children. And he again emphasized that for him, it is not about the next elections, but the next generation. So all of his work within the educational sector and other sectors is to make sure that the next generation of Liberians are up to standards and up to par as how it is, should, it should be. The president currently um, is meeting with the leadership and members of the Firestone Rubber Plantation. Uh, there are discussions around the issues within the sector. And at the conclusion of that meeting, I'll be able to give you a briefing, but the meeting is it's an active discussion ongoing. Uh, as you have seen, uh, the president continues to work for the Liberian people. He continues to you know do what he needs to do. And on Monday, Monday, that will be August 12th, His Excellency, the President, will be traveling to Riverside County, where he's going to be a part of the team for the official dedication of the newly constructed 14th Judicial Circuit Court in Riverside County, and that occasion will happen um, in Sister City. And the President, one of the things when he took office, been coordination between the different branches of government, um, the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. And he started that um, during the course of the 26th to, you know, coordinate and have different meetings. And we've had several meetings uh, with members of the Supreme Court bench, and they've been working on a number of things. Um, and his presence at this event will also show uh, that the president is really very open to coordination and working in the interest of strengthening the rule of law. In fact, as you know, um, part of his arrest agenda, um, there's a pillar particularly on rule of law. And for him, strengthening the rule of law is core in everything that he does. So he will be going there along with members of the Supreme Court and other members of the judiciary to be a part of that ceremony. So thank you again. Look forward to taking uh, your questions. And should you have any, I look forward to engaging with you. Thank you. As the voice of uh, the presidential press secretary, Madam Pia, to speak on this regular press briefing here. Have online on the executive function online platform. As you take three questions, if you're watching from wherever you are, keep your comments coming. Keep it locked on the executive function online platform coming to you from Palo Alto.
It's beautiful, but wet. It's been a wet Friday. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. That's that's wonderful. That means I was very clear on all the different things. Um, so on the question of, and I will I will also say last week we did talk about um, the LSCC um, deadline for public officials to publish their assets, and I did inform you that the president was waiting to receive the report from the LSCC. And I can confirm here that um, His Excellency has received um, the report from LACC, and he's reviewing the report, and he will be taking actions as we go along. Uh, on your specific questions on um, Deputy Minister Masakwe, who was uh, relieved of his post, I mean, we were clear the communication did say for administrative reasons, um, and so the reason why he was relieved of his position from the Ministry of uh, Education was administrative, and yeah, that 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 is what it is. Any, if, if there's no further question, yes, Ojuku. All right, other questions will come. Ojuku. The Oracle mm -hmm. Oracle newspaper, right? Hot mm -hmm. pepper question, newspaper. Yeah, Hot pepper. Mm -hmm. Well, I can confirm that, yes, the president, the team from the Ministry of Justice uh, that did the, um, the investigation, they've done the investigation, concluded, and did submit the report to the president. Uh, and, the, and the report is, is such a volume that the president is reviewing, and as, they conclude, as he's concluding the revision, and he's ready to tell the Liberian people what is the outcome and what decision he's going to take, yes, uh, he's going to do that. But yes, I can tell you that he received the report. The report is currently on a review, and he will be letting um, us know the next step, and then we'll come to you and let you know um, where the president stands on that. I don't think so, there will be I other questions. Ashta Talu, LBS. For all of you, one, the president did set up the National Lesson Group. And of the question, the fact that the last one has to be the last one has to be the two years. The next one has to be a bigger one of the things that we need to have to be able to promote some public officials in our state. All right, thank All right. you. I just talked yes. about access declaration and what the president is going to do. Um, so just so I mean, state again. I said the president just received the report from LACC on the number of um, officials who declared and also the numbers of officials who haven't. Um, and interestingly, uh, this assets declaration is also for the three branches of government. Uh, the president is reviewing the report, and when he concludes, we will be letting you all know what the next course of action is. But again, I will still here uh, encourage officials who have not declared their assets to declare. Um, and one of the other issues that we've heard so far is the challenges, especially with um, officials who are in local government. Some of the people, it's been difficult in terms of uh, understanding the process, even, you know, so, but the Ministry of Internal Affairs has assured us that they're working, especially for those local authority officials who haven't, um, to encourage them and, and, you know, create a system where it's easier for them because some of the locations are really far and LACC is not decentralized. Um, some of the counties, so the declaration process, you can do your forms and you have to come in Monrovia to LACC to file. And so Ministry of Internal Affairs is working with the local government people, especially those local government people who really do not understand or uh, the access coming to LACC office here to do that. 
Uh, but more than that, again, the president is very clear. And you're right, he states, and in fact, he was one of those who was in the first a few weeks of his um, inauguration, he went to LACC and declared his assets, and he's made it public. And he's encouraging all public officials working with him and with this administration to do so. Uh, again, he's going to take action upon the conclusion of the revision of the report. Um, on the question of the Rice Committee, last uh, week, remember there was the fifth cabinet meeting, and I did say to you on that very Friday that the Rice Committee also reported on currently what they're doing. They've had several meetings. They've had several engagements. They've engaged with different uh, segments because with the Rice, the amended I was giving them, it's on all fours. Um, as we all know now that we still have uh, the stable commodity, the price is still stable. It hasn't increased, and we are very sure they have assured the president that they do everything possible not to even have an increase, but to work very hard for the decrease in the price of rice. And that's what they're doing, and they've updated the president during the fifth cabinet meeting, and they'll be doing so as time goes by. So thank you all. Oh, you, do you have a question, Lena? Yes. Another question. Education. Education. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned something about the capacity. Uh, you don't want to see I'm more concerned about um, uh, Liberian experiment. As the president mentioned, some of the challenges within the educational sector, and you're 100% right, I do know that because uh, I used to be a teacher going to the classrooms. You'll see uh, roof falling off, the, the ceilings are all tattered, the kids are sitting on the floor. Some of them maybe have to bring chairs from the different homes so that they're able to sit in the classes. Even in Montserrat here, there are places, there are parts of Montserrat that when you go, you see kids, uh, there are no chairs, there are no instructors. So the challenges within the educational system is humongous. Uh, and of course, budgetary allocation and increment is one part. Um, but making sure that the system works. And across government, one of the major issues has been um, the resources or the budget just based on personal costs alone. So trying to reimagine re how we can make sure that what's going to the specific sector, the direct beneficiary of the educational system to receive them. Um, in terms of the budgetary allocation, yes, the president is keen on improving the sector. So it's just beyond budget. It's not just only on budget, it's on the system corruption from the educational system. He also spoke to showing that the classrooms are conducive. He also mentioned uh, the one child, one chair policy, um, that a program that he started, and this is something that he's very committed to doing, that classrooms must be conducive for children, and children and students uh, must be able to sit in classrooms where they're able to learn. So he's committed to that just beyond the budget. Yes, portion of it can be allocated to financial resources, but some of it is more so to monitoring, for example. Because if you sit with the Minister of Education, she'll tell you some of the instructors don't even know how to read and write. You know, and they are on the system, they're on payroll. There, some of the instructors do not even have lesson plans. Some of the instructors who will just come to class and take the students to go on their farms. You know, so it's a whole systemic situation with the educational sector. But one thing I can say for sure is that you have a team at the Ministry of Education, a team that is well suited, a team that the president selected, a team that's willing and ready to move. That's why when the minister got um, appointed and commissioned, she took her time to go to the classroom, to go to the counties, and she sat in some of the classrooms to just observe. And you'll be surprised some of the things that you see. Some of our students, some of our kids, they cannot even read at their grade level. Someone will tell you they're in the sixth grade, but they can't even read a third grade material. So the problem is just beyond the budget. 
The problem is systematic and systemic. And so the president and his team at the Ministry of Education, they're going to deal with that little by little, holistically. First off, reading corruption. And this program that was launched today um, was to ensure that kids are back in the classroom. Because, you know, we have a free and compulsory primary education policy that was uh, instituted when the president now was vice president um, under the regime of Her Excellency, um, former President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Um, so so that program is still on. Yes, still the kids are not going to school. So this one is to encourage the kids to get back to school while at the same time dealing with the issue of conducive classroom, teachers, credentials, and a number of different, you know, things that are happening within our system. So yes, thank you all so much. And I look forward to engaging with you again some another time. All right, thank you and have a wonderful a Friday show. evening. Press Secretary, Bonner, bring us up to speed on the uh, press briefing, the regular press briefing right here. We bounce up the executive mansion and come up live on the executive mansion online platform. Bono, we have what the entire team will have to come to the end of this game from the family. Go back in the room. The entire team. My name is Emmanuel Kipper. Thanks for being there. Thanks for viewing. And uh, catch you another time.